Hey everyone, today we're coming up upon another flood. You see it coming into the edge of the road. It's gonna start making the road pretty soft. Here it is. This is because of the beavers. They do this every year. This is our third year checking this flood out. Eventually, if it gets worse, it will start crossing the road back there. The culvert is up here to the left. It's a fairly small culvert. Only got an 18 inch diameter. Taking a peek over at it. Yes, that's 100% beaver related. Beavers are probably gonna get angry as I come to unclog this. That's all right. I have got a lot of warnings here from beavers splashing their tail really hard. They get angry when you show up here to do this. All right, so here we are. Water's up really high. Too close to the road, it's gonna cause damage. Oh, we got some nice friendly moose tracks here. So I can already tell this road's soft. If like a big tractor trailer comes here, it's gonna sink right into this and cause a lot of ruts. Water table's way too high. It's good to see the beavers at least. Past couple days driving around, all the usual locations, they've already been trapped. So at any moment, I could expect to see some beavers do some tail slaps. Take a look at all these water beetles on the surface. There's so many of them. So at least a couple hundred here. You're able to make out all those. They, they look white because the sun is reflecting off all their shiny black shells. But this is beavers. See this? This big, muddy beaver dam. We can get that off really easily. Get it blasting on the other side. Beavers always get really angry when we're at this location. Somewhere back there, I hear a big bullfrog. But by removing this, this only drops it back like a foot. And right here, we got about three feet of water. So that's not going to affect these animals. Look at this. This culvert is not nearly deep enough. We were here in the winter time. Uh... Early spring, I should say, but there was still snow on the ground. The sting is put in incorrectly. The exiting end... No, no. The when they dug this ditch, the middle has to be higher than both ends because the end there had water, but yet it was barely coming out the other side. So I believe they put it on a crown. Horrible idea. Not sure if it was done that way originally or just because the road is so soft it was bent that way from heavy truck traffic. But let me show you what's over here on the other side before we start messing with this. Not much. This will start blasting pretty fast. That's all we got coming out. This is a better culvert, it's pretty high quality. All right, so this is a fairly easy one. I'm gonna go get my gloves on. Heard that bullfrog again. Woo! All right, everybody, we're all set up and we're gonna start unclogging this. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some beavers in the background. Alright everyone, this is pretty cool. I want to 
move you closer over here so you can see what's actually happening. Gotta set this camera stand up properly. Into the mud. This is pretty cool as it, as it starts sucking up all this muck. All right, we got that open pretty well. Not that big of a culvert, but there's a lot of suction on there. Ton of suction. This culvert's doing very good. Nicely done. Take a look at that. See all the clouds we just made in there from disturbing the bottom? Almost completely all sucked in. This water's already running clean. And if they haven't already noticed, the beavers are gonna notice very soon. 
a drop in water and they'll immediately come out here to notice what's happening. A beaver can clog this thing up in literally just a couple minutes. All they have to do is take mud from the bottom, push it right back up against the pipe. And that's why this thing is extremely undersized. But the beavers probably weren't here when it was installed. You saw before I started, there was such a small trickle. So it's not undersized, the culvert. Right now it's just handling a ton of water that has built up over the past month. And once we drop this back a foot, it's going to take one big rainstorm or another month of storing water by the beavers to get it back up here. Now let's go see what's happening across the street. Yes, we have a lot of water over here. That grass right there wasn't under. There was just a tiny little trickle. In fact, there was a bunch of sticks right there built up. It pushed those away. Let's get a good look at this. Yeah, before we started, there was water pouring out of the culvert. Now the water line is up inside the culvert a few inches. But as you can see, this is not working at maximum capacity. There'd be so much more. This culvert has a kink in the center of the road. It's put on top of like a crown in the street. This is before, and here is after. Yep, this water went up a whole bunch. All right, this culvert is doing a good job. It could be draining 500 or more gallons per minute. This swamp probably has a few hundred thousand. Uh, within the foot of reach, because this is only going to drop back like a foot, I'd say at least 50,000 gallons of water if the beavers don't intervene immediately. One thing I want to get looking at, because I don't want someone to steal it. We're on a very remote road that only has about one passer buyer every couple hours. But still, I want to put a trail camera somewhere. I was thinking one of these trees, but how? I also don't want a beaver to take it. If you notice, beavers weren't really using sticks to jam this, it was just mud. So when they discover this, they can block it in a matter of a couple minutes. They can just scoot the bottom, push it against it. Super easy. But where could we put a trail camera? I have magnetic tripods I'd be willing to just put on the grate, but it's too easy. Anyone coming by could see it and steal it. So I was hoping this would be a much bigger culvert. Um, I was actually looking for a bigger culvert clogged by beavers, but none of the known spots are available anymore. The beavers have all been relocated for being problematic. I'm preferably looking for a three or four foot pipe. I can just stick it on the ceiling looking out. I don't see a practical way to get out into the swamp. But I'm going to try to think of something. Down the road about 50 feet from the great i was just unclogging there's a good amount of tadpoles a few hundred of them here like wood frogs most of them that aren't stuck in little pools are going to find their way back into the swamp because you see it's at a good slope most of them as the water disappears will swim back but as a precaution ghost 10's been down here Swishing them around trying to get them out of these puddles back into the swamp Because these puddles will be gone in about an hour or so as water levels start to drop back And right here. Oh wow look at the tadpoles here Thousands of them look at these guys But these ones right here will all be fine because it's got a slope going back into the swamp 
and puddles like this aren't going to dry up because they've got barriers from the swamp. Eventually the water table will take them away. But over here, all these tadpoles, you see the slope of the road. As soon as it goes down, they're just going to follow the water back into this deep part, which is permanent. Oh wow, look at them down here. There's so many tadpoles. Tens of thousands of them, if not more. Every one of these little black specks this far down the road. I can't believe there's not birds sitting here picking them off. Endless tadpoles. Look how far I'm walking. The reason they're in the shallowest water is because it's the warmest. Tadpoles need warmth to become a frog. And look at that. Look at a moose went through here recently. See? Every place it stepped the mud away and it's just plain sand where the moose is walking. This far down, there's not as many tadpoles. Probably because they didn't hatch when this was flooded. Very few have made their way down here. Every now and then I see a little scraggler. And if we go this far, the water's actually trickling. So years ago when we saw this thing going over the road, that means it must have been after a storm because now all the overflow from that beaver pond is coming down here. Good thing the beavers didn't notice this yet. Here's their deer tracks. Because when beavers notice a leak, they'll plug it. They would plug this drainage ditch if they knew about it. The drainage ditch needs to be dug out because this is on the road. Ditch is supposed to be right in there. But right here where you see it ending, it's now entering the drainage ditch again. Yep, back into the ditch. This will all stop trickling. This is going to dry up once its actual culvert takes care of it. And here we are at another culvert. We've never visited this one before. This is where all the water's going. Oh, big frog just hopped in. So this water's slowly going to dry up. And that frog, he'll find his way back. They're good at that. So this culvert will probably be barely flowing at all, if at all, when we return in about an hour or two. This culvert needs to be seriously dug out. And you see how far into the road it is? It's too short. Either they were just being cheap on the culvert, or over the years they widened the road. Maybe when they installed it, the road wasn't quite as wide. Maybe it got hit with an idiot with an excavator and they had to cut it in more because it wasn't functional at the end all crumpled. Who knows? All that matters is it's operating right now. We will check on this culvert along with the culvert we just unclogged in about an hour or two. Not to mention this causes extreme damage in the winter months. It's not as bad now unless a big heavy log truck gets really close to the edge of the road, which will happen if they need to pass each other. It'll sink pretty deep as it is now. Pretty dangerous, but come winter time this will cause major frost heaves now. Water table's too high because of these beavers. All right, everyone. So we're going to be putting a trail camera over there on a tree. And we're not going to have it on motion sensing mode like you would usually do with a trail camera. But we are going to have it on a camera setting where it makes a video every minute. And we're going to be gone for a couple hours. If the beavers are active, they should definitely come over here and start clogging it up. Uh, something's rippling in the distance. It might be a beaver, but we got some trail cameras right here that we're gonna we're gonna put one out. So we're gonna try this one. I've never used it before. It's brand new. Uh, that's what happens when you buy from a uh, bootleg seller. See this? Supposedly these are the exact same camera from the same listing, but they work good even though they're off-brand. I'm gonna go ahead and try to string this up in a tree. I'm actually gonna go and not use the strap. I'm gonna get a couple zip ties because this is not the best thing to use when I'm putting it on a tree that's like less than an inch diameter. So I'm gonna get a couple zip ties. All right, everyone, so here's what I'm gonna do. Put a zip tie 
right through here. And in fact, I probably only need one. Yes, I probably only need one. This number two, I don't even need. So we're gonna go put this on a little tree. Let's hope I don't get soaked. I just went out to this spot and I almost slipped on a log. Slippery log. Standing on a tree stump. And here we go with the camera. Gonna have to adjust some of the settings. It's gonna go right here. All right, everyone, we're here about two hours later. The water is getting lower. The beavers have not acted yet. Right here's a few tadpoles trapped in little puddles that we're gonna remove and throw back into the pond. Most of the tadpoles were able to make their way back. Let's see if we still have all that water trickling down to the next culvert. Yeah, look at these little pockets of them. See them stuck? Just got to make sure they can get back out. Look at the concentration of them here. There's so many tadpoles. Thousands of them concentrated right here. Like these ones here that can't get out. Got to get them back. Hopefully they'll all follow. Slowly get them all out here. As long as they're in there and able to move, they should be able to get themselves out. Look at the amount of them. And earlier when we were here, the water was up here. Got a couple of them, see, like stranded here. Just gotta grab them and throw them back. Like these ones right here. They're still alive, let's get them out. All right, I just got them out. And the good news about most of these tadpoles we're able to just get them and put them back in, even the ones that are, a couple of them that are beached, that didn't follow the cue of the moving water. If you have a pet tadpole, it's constantly coming up to the surface. And breathing. It's like these ones right here are beached. Go throw them into there. See, we got a few of them there. If we put them back in the water, they can simply swim away. They will die if they dry out. And look over here, look at all those frog eggs that haven't even hatched yet. Now remember when I took you guys down to the culvert two hours ago, I was pointing out these moose tracks. It went, <sighs> made it sandy as it pushed the mud away as they were walking. That was pretty far in. Got a couple feet of road back, even though we've only dropped two or three inches. Down here, there weren't any tadpoles. So back there, way more tadpoles got off the road than I thought. Honestly, looking around, there's literally only like a dozen of them that didn't survive out of those probably tens of thousands. And you see there's barely any trickle now coming down to this far culvert. This is about to stop. You saw earlier how much current was actually coming down here. And these pools right here don't have any tadpoles that I can see. It's possible a moose came by here. That track looks too fresh 
in what was underwater. And we come over here to the culvert. Barely anything coming in it. We go across the street. Yeah, there's barely anything. Wow, look at that. Iron oxidizing bacteria. That must have been more on the ceiling of the culvert and as the water dropped it became loose and started coming out. Here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like right now. Let's see if we can move some of these rocks, get this iron oxidizing bacteria to start flowing out. I wonder how much is gonna start coming out of there. Oh, here it comes. Oh, here it comes. That is gross looking. That is nasty looking. I think what I just moved, that big clump, just got collected there by the rocks. It got like concentrated over the, fat, the past few hours. And there's still a good amount of it coming. Iron oxidizing bacteria looks really gross when it starts baking and dying in the sun. Oh, look at this big clump. Oh, it's mixed with foam too. That's why it looks so weird. Yep, just natural foam from the swamp. It's just organic debris that gets aerated. I bet there's a lot more coming. This thing is pretty stagnant. Look at this thing. All that stuff you just saw come out, look at it all clumping together. There's a few more big chunks on their way out. Let's dig a little deeper. Get this water moving faster. All right, looks like we're done here. The ones around the edge, you gotta help them in very carefully. All right, we're back again after another two hours. It's been a total of four hours. This puddle along the edge of the road has completely dried up. The culvert down the street has stopped flowing completely. This water is still dropping. It's dropped approximately almost half of what it's going to if the beavers don't intervene. As you can see, amazingly, the beavers have not come back. Almost every time I've been here on clogging this, I've seen splashes. Now, I know this isn't the beaver's only pond. Further up there, there is another dam. So unless the beavers are actually down here, you're not going to see them. Or, I mean, they're not going to be alerted of this water drop unless they physically come down here. Because their next pond, it's not going to affect it up there. But, it doesn't look like anything's going to happen. It's been four hours. Maybe something may happen at night, but this is too far out. I can't leave the camera here. We can't waste resources and come out here again just to grab this camera. It takes two full tanks of gas just to get to this point. 
which is expensive these days. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that camera. We'll try that again at some other location. Preferably a four foot culvert, like I mentioned, that could be up close and inside. Because that's kind of a far away angle. I don't even think this would come out very well. Oh well, hope this video was interesting everyone. Thanks for watching. It's going to be easy to get this camera now. Before I had water right here. A couple inches of water I was walking in. I came up here, this was stable ground. Then this slippery log I got to go out on was completely under. It's parts of it now are not. This is a very slippery log. Yeah, it's slippery. And this tree stump is from the last time they logged here. Because when they logged here last time, this probably wasn't a swamp. They built the road, which allowed the beavers to build this by plugging their culvert. Because that right there, all these clumps where you see, those are all likely stumps back in the day. Look at these big dead cedar trees. They don't rot. So they just become petrified, whether they're laying in the mud or up there. And here is that far culvert. There is no water connecting these two culverts anymore. Everything coming through it now is basically just drying up as the water table decreases.